I don't necessarily know what it might mean to make the invisible visible. I don't necessarily even know if I'm successful at it. I don't have a lot of images of like my grandparents or things like that. So I think my practice started as a way of thinking about these things I didn't have access to and how I'm trying to build something for myself as a means of knowing past generations and as a means of being known to future generations. I think a lot about migration, specifically migration from the Caribbean. My generation is the first generation to have moved across to the U.S. and so a lot of my work deals with that intergenerational knowledge, intergenerational trauma. In 2013, I went back to Haiti for the first time since moving here. I was making work about my family who I hadn't seen in a long time and that sort of like propelled where my practice has gone since then. I started looking to find like my grandmother and my grandfather, like images of them, and there weren't any. I was just photographing everything religiously, and so I would photograph where I went and everyone that I was with. So I ended up coming from that trip with like this insane amount of like images. I draw on these photographs for the images that I end up making. The core of my work is photography, and then I add on different mediums like sculpture, video, sound, and installation as well. I have been thinking about not necessarily having everything being visible for the viewer, maybe having certain obstacles. That's where part of the sculptural elements come into play. And I've always thought about like my photographs as these kinds of windows windows into different people's lives, different time periods as well. And so slowly but surely it became something that I wanted to make physical. Some of it I think I'm using as a way of like flattening time within my work. Thinking of ways where like different generations in my family can exist together in a space. I never met my grandmother and I never met my grandfather. And so I want the space to be a space where like maybe the impossible happens, like the impossible meetings happen. Most of it is based in curiosity. How do I photograph things or people that I never met? How do I convey certain emotions that I'm feeling? I'm referencing like this image of my mom on her wedding day. I'm sure she viewed like this day, well, actually I don't know how she viewed the day, but I keep thinking about like how she must have felt during that day and how that was like the beginning of like a different part of her life. And so I wanted to recreate, but also update this image that could reference my mom or myself as well. Thinking about that image, but making something new. I've been making these night pictures lately thinking about stories that I've been told as a kid when I was in Haiti, specifically the Lugau. This creature, this person looks fine during the day, but at night they transform into like this other animal form and come to your house and stalk your baby. And so I've been really interested in this, like I wouldn't say myth, but things there's not necessarily photographic evidence of. And so part of it is still thinking about this belief that's like, ingrained in me in some way. Even when I went back to Haiti in 2013, I would not leave the house at night. And so I wanted to like make photographs that reference things that just stay with you, despite geographical distance, despite time distance. Maybe part of it is me trying to reconcile this belief from when I was a kid to where I am now as an adult, but also as an adult living in the US that doesn't necessarily have the same belief systems. I don't have access to Haiti right now, and so where can I find the closest thing within the U.S.? L.A. for me has always been that spot. Even when I was living in New York, I would come here to shoot just because aspects of it remind me of Haiti. The colors, the architecture as well, the plants specifically, because so many of the plant lives that I'm drawn to are based on these memories I have of like different flowers as a kid. These parks offer these little pockets of land where I can just visualize this kind of like fake Haiti onto it. I'm drawn to Deb's Park partly because of this area where there's this pond, but also like this pocket of light that I think gives me room to create these sort of magical and at times surreal images. What 
the work offers is for me a place of curiosity to think about my own existence, think about my ancestors' existence, my mom's existence. But I, I would say first and foremost, it's for me um, as a means of like having proof that I existed.